Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I will be re reviewing Yola Park's third installment when it came to their AMK uh, Transformer model kits that is focused on G1, which is Starscream. Now, I already made a video on the unboxing and full build of this uh, of this figure so if you want to check that out I will leave a link on the description this video will be focused more on the review of the fully built figure now same thing as their uh, Optimus Prime and Megatron release this figure comes with this amazing stand with the Decepticon logo this time because Starscream's a Decepticon that is really a very nice touch I really actually love this figure stand and I'm glad that this is one last thing you have to worry about uh, in displaying your model kit he comes with these two blast effects uh, which can be both the uh, removed here so you can actually use this as a beam effect for his uh, for his uh, guns or you can also use them as a booster effect which you can connect to his uh, leg and then he comes with these two alternate mouthpiece which, to be honest, um, I don't really find that much different. But yeah, if you look further, if you look deeper on them, they, they, there is a little difference. I think one's kind of smirking and one is like probably the neutral look. And then there's this uh, rocket launch uh, blast effect, which you can connect to his chest which basically opens up I, I will show them later it opens up to where to where you can fire rockets to be honest I'm um, this this success this is the accessory yes which I am really the least fond of I don't really use them too much because uh, I don't know I think they are too short on the blast rages or something like that I don't know, I just, I just really don't like them that much. Now, let's have a closer look at the figure. Now, this is the mouth plate that I will be displaying him because when I think Starscream, this is how I imagine him. Now, he has a light up picture wherein, uh, same thing as the previous releases. Megatron and Optimus Prime wherein the magnet is actually hidden here wherein if you can put it there if you have batteries the eyes will light up and it has three modes the one that blinks fast the one that just lights up and the one that glows very slowly uh, I tried it but it doesn't work so I'm assuming that there's no battery there unlike uh, Optimus Prime which actually came with the batteries out of the box the red and the blue and gray uh, that was used here is actually perfect it's actually uh, pretty perfect for the character but the best thing that I like on the finish of this uh, of this figure is the wear and tear effect like the damage effect so there if you will look closely there's that random uh, paint chipping it is very subtle that it's actually done very well even on the leg there's that so there's that and then add to that the final lining that they did i love that they final line this uh, figure already so that's again one last thing that i uh, need to do and it was actually done very perfectly and 
since this is star screen, the Decepticon logo is upside down. Yeah, overall, the finish of this figure is really, really done very well. Now this is what I'm talking about, that I said that this chest opens up and you'll see rockets there and you can actually put this to make them look like it's blasting some rockets but to be honest, uh, connecting them here has a very specific angle. Wow, I'm actually good. I'm actually, I actually want to show that it's a little hard putting them, but of course, now that I'm recording the video, it stays there. Anyway, um, I don't know because what I don't like about this effect is that it's just violet plastic. I was kind of hoping that at least uh, they painted the rockets to differentiate them from the blast effect. I think that's the main reason why. I, I, I don't want to display him with this because I don't know, they just look weird. I think another design flaw that I can just, uh, well, I don't know, I just, maybe it's just, uh, it's just for me. It's, it may not be a design flaw for you guys, but for me, what I really don't like is the lack of articulation range of these wings. It's just like that and then I'm used to seeing Starscream having these wings rotate and they don't rotate. Well, maybe because he doesn't transform, that's why they didn't find the need, but I think it would really give him more articulation wings on the hand if this somehow rotates. This glass or clear portion Nah, not glass, this clear plastic portion. It's also removable, but I don't I don't know why you would be removing it because there's no paint here. So yeah, this, I know the sculpt is there, but there isn't really any paint there. So I don't know. It it doesn't actually look that good. So I'm just gonna be keeping it there. But I just want to show you guys that there's that option. Now guys, don't get me wrong, those things that I said about the inside there and the wings is basically just me nitpicking. But to be honest, I love this star screen figure because I love the way that uh, they are it the panel linings done pretty well, the shading and uh damage the the subtle damage or chipping on the paint is really done very well so yeah i love this star screen figure now let's look at the articulation you can look up that far you cannot look down but you can do a little side to side then you can look there there for the hands, this rotates, this is, this articulates, then you can go up that far, do that, then there's that articulation there, then, yeah, this is what I'm saying, if, if this can be, is actually moved, it will not it kind of limits the articulation of the hands because this doesn't move too fast this this is kind of fixed then there's that the elbow joint is actually perfect i mean look at that that's a complete 100 percent perfect range for the elbow then for the hands, he has articulated fingers wherein three are connected. Then there's the single one and the thumb is also articulated. 
for the because of the limitation on the design you can actually lean down only that far then you can lean back that much i guess actually there's yeah i know that there's a, it is designed to look to bend forward more so yeah so yeah there so there's that articulation there but backward backward i think is the one that has this, uh with range is not that much then you can do a side to side waist rotation is not that much because as i said i think it's because of the design of the figure so yeah it doesn't uh, it doesn't take that much for the leg there's the toys feeble and then it has a drop down like that so there's a drop down there so we can actually kick forward that far you can even kick higher if you move this there if he wants to kick Megatron or Optimus Prime then this side also opens up the back also opens up so we can kick backward that far then it can kick this side that far so this drop down articulation actually gives the legs a bigger range then you can do that and yes actually an ankle uh yeah but it has a a butt here that but because of the design again articulation here is pretty limited now for size comparison here he is with the uh, in the, uh, with the uh, Optimus Prime and Megatron which are released before him so these three figures are currently the only uh, release that Yolo Park has done on this G1 line I think based on the uh, news that I had Bumblebee is gonna be next which to be honest it's kind of boring uh, I wish what they did since they released uh, uh, Starscream, which we all know, basically uh, same mold. So Thundercracker and Skywalker abilities. I wish what they did. The next character is that they will release is the Autobot, which is basically uh, the one that also shares body mold. Maybe Blue Streak and Prowl, or uh, Sideswipe and red alert or something like that because uh, to be honest uh g1 bumblebee is not really that interesting to me unlike what they did in the transformer movies wherein they uh, they basically made bumblebee a badass but in the g1 it's basically this uh, this uh, small uh, one of the mini bots that are usually captured and rescued by the other bots so yeah i, I just kind of wish that uh they released the other other autobot characters before bumblebee or i don't even have any problem if they'd release another decepticon like soundwave because that's i i, I must admit as, uh, uh, aside from Optimus Prime as far as robot design I think the Decepticons are much as much cooler design because I, I like I like I actually like the sweepers and I like Soundwave so I don't know I just uh, uh, I just wish uh, they released other uh, character 
before Bumblebee. Now, to finish up the video, is this figure worth buying? Well, to be honest guys, um, if you're one of those people who doesn't like to buy non-transforming transformers, I understand you. Uh, I used to be like that, but uh, to be honest, this Yolo Park, uh, Yolo Park model kits is one of the things that changed my mind because they, 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 well, first thing that attract them is the price point and then their G1 line, the AMK Pro Series that are G1 line has a lot of die-cast parts. So despite of the fact that this is a model kit, he has some weight into it because he has a lot of die-cast parts. And but let's admit, this is a pretty good looking star screen. Me actually, the main guiding uh, reason why I started collecting non-transforming transformers is that uh, I, 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 uh, I usually just collect masterpieces but then Hasbro, let's face it, Hasbro or Takara Tommy uh, is kind of really slow when uh, they releases on that one and sometimes they, well, when they release a certain character is not the one that I like so that's one because uh, this model kit are actually basically in masterpiece scale and then another thing is that uh, I started actually to uh, have interest in stop motion and when it comes to the masterpieces or transforming transformers they sometimes sacrifice the articulation because of the transformation aspect of the figure so the reason why i like yolo Fark is that because the price is cheaper and then the look is actually pretty good and then they have die cast parts so i'm kind of into this line compared to the other company that releases uh, non-transforming transformers i think this the yolo park is the one that is actually worth the buck that you pay for and yeah uh, as i said if if i want to make uh, if i want to make stop motion videos of the transformers fighting or something like that this is actually going to be fun to use because of the articulation and the fact that they are not uh, you you won't well you're still gonna regret if you dis if they, if they become broken but not as much regret that you will have if your masterpiece uh, transformers are the one that gets broken so guys if you reach this part of my video thanks a lot if you like my video please don't forget to like share and subscribe and as usual guys uh, thanks for the support and See you on the next video.